Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another AWS hands-on tutorial where we'll integrate AWS Step Functions with EventBridge. If you're not familiar with EventBridge or Step Functions, I recommend watching my prior videos on EventBridge with S3 and Lambda, as well as AWS Step Functions prior to following along here, as these videos will give you a foundation in working with these services. In this video, we'll upload a JSON document into an S3 bucket, which will trigger an EventBridge rule to invoke a step function. The step function will retrieve and read the object from the S3 bucket, send the data to Lambda, then either persist the data in DynamoDB or write to an SQS queue. Before we start building out the solution, let's jump into VS Code and take a look at the JSON document. Here we see a contrived example of a collection of orders. The first order contains both contact info and order info, whereas the second order contains only order info. So in our use case, when the JSON data is read in to the step function and passed to Lambda, if the contact info exists in the order, that data will be persisted to DynamoDB. If the contact data is missing, we'll write to an SQS queue where it can be reviewed at a later time. Now, since this JSON document will need to be uploaded into an S3 bucket, I'll jump into the AWS console and create the bucket. I'll give the bucket a name, click create, then open the bucket, go into properties, and since this bucket will be used to trigger an event bridge rule, I'll edit the Amazon event bridge section select on to send notifications to Amazon EventBridge for all events in this bucket and save changes. Now, going back to our architecture diagram, we'll recall that when an object is uploaded into S3, basically this JSON document, it will trigger the EventBridge rule, which will invoke the step function. The step function will retrieve the object from S3 and then pass the individual orders to a Lambda function, which will determine whether it contains contact info. So let's jump back into VS Code and take a look at the Lambda function. Here we see that this Lambda function's pretty straightforward. When it's invoked, we'll print the event out, then check to see if the event contains the contact info. If it does, we'll simply print processing order to the console and then return the event. If the event doesn't contain contact info, then we'll print an error message to the console and then raise a contact info not found exception. So let's go ahead and grab this code, jump into the Lambda console and create our function. I give the function a name and the runtime will be Python 3.10. Then I'll create the function. And I'll replace the default code with the code we copied and deploy the change. Now, if it's the case that contact info is not included in the event, we'll raise this exception. And when the exception is raised and returned to the step function, we'll write to an SQS queue. So let's jump into the SQS console and create the queue. And of course, if it's the case that the contact info exists, We'll return the event, and the step function will persist the data in a DynamoDB table. So let's jump into DynamoDB and create the table. I'll give it a name, and for the partition key, I'll enter order ID, which will be a string. Then scroll down and create the table. Okay, with the S3 bucket, the Lambda function, DynamoDB table and SQSQ provisioned, we can move on to the step function. So to get started with that, I'll jump into the step function console and create a state machine. I'll write my workflow in code, and this will be a standard workflow. For the definition, I'll replace the default demo code with code from my GitHub repo. And jumping into VS Code, we could take a look at the JSON. To begin with, the start at property has a value of get order data, which is the first item in the states. 
The type is a task and the resource is the get object method on the S3 bucket. In order to get the object from the S3 bucket, I need to set the parameters for the bucket name and the key. And these values will be passed in when EventBridge invokes the step function. The value for the next property is process order data. And that's the next state. Here we see the type is a map. So this map will loop over the data that's passed as input into the process order data state. And that data is set in the get order data states results selector. The property will be detail, which is the input path. And the value will be the body of the data read in from the S3 bucket. Back in the process order data state, next we see the items path, which is orders. So we'll be processing the orders data in the detail from the input path. Max concurrency of two means we want a maximum of two parallel processes for the mapping. The iterator will start at process data, which is a states property declared inside of the iterator and it's the first state. This type is a task and the resource is the ARN of our Lambda function. So I'll go ahead and replace this by jumping over to the Lambda console, grabbing the ARN and pasting it in. Next comes the process order state, which we see below. The input for the process order state will be set in this result selector where we'll set a contact info property and an order property equal to the contact info and order info for the current data being processed in the map iterator. Now, remember in the Lambda function, if the order has contact info, we're returning it. Else, if it doesn't have info, we're throwing an exception, in which case we'll catch it. And if the error is equal to task failed on the state, then we'll invoke the publish to SQS state, which is defined below. Now, this type is a task, and the resource is the send message method on the SQS queue. And the parameters are the queue URL, which we'll jump over to the SQS console and grab. And the message body is equal to the message that's passed in to the state. So back in process data, if the Lambda function determines that the order has contact info, then we'll move on to the process order state. Process order is a task and the resource is the put item method on DynamoDB. So for the parameters, we need to pass in the table name, which we'll get from the DynamoDB console. And for the item we wanna persist, we're setting the value of the order ID, which is the partition key, equal to the order ID passed in in the order info. The item ID is the item ID in the order info, and the quantity is the quantity in the order info. And then the contact name is the name property on the contact info, and the contact email is equal to the email property on the contact info. And jumping back into the data.json file, here we see those values. So now I'll save the file, copy the code, jump back over in the step function console and paste it in. Then over on the right, we see our graph, starting with get order data, which then goes to process data. If the data has contact info, then we'll process the order and persist it to DynamoDB. If the data doesn't have contact info, then we'll publish to the SQS queue. Now I'll go ahead and click next. Give the state machine a name. And for permissions, I'll let the state machine create the IAM role. Then create the state machine. Now, before we move on to our last step and create the event bridge rule, I want to open the IAM role. And here we see it's added the permissions for the DynamoDB table, the Lambda invoke, the SQS queue and X-ray, but we need to be able to read from the S3 bucket. So I'm gonna add a permission to attach a policy. And for the demo, I'll just grant Amazon S3 full access and add the permission. 
Now I'll head over to the event bridge console and create a rule on the default event bus. I'll give it a name and the rule type will be rule with an event pattern. Click next. The event bridge will be an AWS events or event bridge partner events. Then I'll edit the pattern, jump back into VS code, head over to the event bridge rule.json and insert my bucket name. Now I'll copy the code and paste it into the event pattern. Then click next. And for the target, I'll choose a step function state machine and select my state machine. And for the execution role, I'll let event bridge create it. Click next, next, and then create the rule. Here we see the status is enabled. And if we go into the rule, again, we see the event pattern listening for object created on the S3 bucket and the target is the orders demo state machine. So with all our AWS resources provisioned, it's time to test. So in the S3 bucket, I'll click upload and upload the data.json file. And if we head over to the step function, go into the state machine, we see there was one execution which succeeded. So again, the start was on get order data. And if we look at the input, we see the source is AWS S3 with the bucket name and the object key. The output is the contents of the JSON file. Next, looking at the process order data state, we see the details for iteration one. But if we come up to the process order data dropdown, we'll see it's zero indexed. So let's look at index zero and go into process data. And the input has a contact info and order info. And the output is the record. So the next state is process order where the input is the record and the output has a response code of 200 for the insert into the DynamoDB table. So let's jump over to DynamoDB and explore table items. And we see we have one item for order ID one, the contacts email and name, the item and the quantity. Now, if we go into process order data element one, here we see the input for the process data is the order record without the contact info. So the next state in this flow is published to SQS, where the input is the record and the output is status code 200 from the publish to the queue. So if we jump over to SQS, go to send and receive messages and pull for messages, we see our one message with the body equal to the JSON for the order without the contact info. So we've looked at the SQS queue. We've looked at the DynamoDB table. We looked at the results of the step function events. So let's head over to Lambda. And we'll go into monitor and then view the CloudWatch logs. And here we see we have two log streams. Now there are two log streams because in the process order data state, we indicated we want a max concurrency of two. And the two are the resources for the Lambda function. So going into the first log stream, we see the JSON for the order with the contact info and then the processing order message. And if we go back to the log streams and select the second, here we see the JSON for the order without the contact info and the error message for contact info not found. And finally, if we go into the event bridge console and into monitoring, we see our one invocation and one triggered rule. So that concludes this demo on integrating step functions with EventBridge. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.